Assalamu yeah. alaikum. Peace to the scientists. It's your bro, your brilliant engineer, and Tariq Cardet back at it again with another episode of the STEM Files, the voice of STEM talent in black culture. On tonight's episode, we have a very special return guest, student Mr. Dr. Wesley Muhammad, talking about atomic bomb technology and the more powerful. Get your thinking caps on, get your notepads out, like, comment, share, and tune in for more after this. Let's get it. Believe in these false prophets, I say I bet he lying. Bet he lying. No bet football, lying. New York City Giants. Girl, dad, rest in peace to Kobe Bryant. When we teaching our babies, we teach them heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. When we teaching our women, we teach them heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Yeah. When we teach men, we teach them heavy Yes, again, again, welcome, welcome back to your Black is STEM platform, the STEM files, the voice of STEM talent in Black culture. We do our best to highlight the best and brightest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We are live, family, live, 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 YouTube at the STEM files, Facebook at the STEM files, FB. Make sure you like, comment, you subscribe, and you hit the notification button to stay abreast of all of our content. I am your humble co-host, Jabril Muhammad, a.k.a. Jabrilian Engineer a civilian mechanical engineer with a focus on naval ship fluid systems and a background in material science and engineering, the study of the various material class and how they can utilize and manipulate it for making things stronger, faster, lighter, more effective, and more efficient. I am joined by my co-host, my brother in the life sciences, Tariq Muhammad, a.k.a. Tariq Pardiak. What's going on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As my, as my brother just stated, I'm in the life sciences, so uh, our respective uh, STEM backgrounds complement each other. Uh, my name is Tariq Mohammed, a.k.a. Tariq Cardiac. I'm a biomedical research scientist with a concentration in cardiovascular pathobiology, which is the study of how diseases form in the heart and blood vessels. I'm excited for tonight's episode. Uh, we have a special guest co-host joining us uh, this evening again. Um, she did a phenomenal job on our last episode where we interviewed <laughs> Sister Dr. Isam Mohammed on you know, her journey coming back from Cuba and, and making sure that she uh, just, you know, make sure, making sure that she qualifies herself to practice medicine in the United States. That was a very, very, very um, eye-opening episode and very well received by our STEM files community. We have Sister Dr. Joy Tuet. She is a uh, doctor of Chinese medicine. And she, once again, she'll be adding a flair of, not a flair, but a different angle for tonight's episode coming because her mind, her mind is, 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 the mind of a medical practitioner. So the questions are gonna come out a little different. So we're excited about that. Just Dr. Joy, can you give us a brief introduction of who you are outside of what I just stated? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. I'll praise you to Allah. Um, again, I'm Sister Dr. Joy 2X. I'm your guest co-hostess. Uh, I study East Asian medicine and acupuncture and um, just all things science, all things life, all things love. So looking forward to speaking with all of you and especially Dr. Wesley Muhammad. Praise be to Allah. Well, family, um, we, Jabril and I always like to say that we don't really like to, you know, talk about ourselves too much. We like to get into the, to the magnificence of, a get, of the guest tonight. So without any further ado, we like to welcome back to the platform. I think this is his third time on the STEM Files. Uh, he, was on, he was on our OG platform, Blog Talk Radio, where we were doing everything audio. He, he joined us when we came back after the lockdown and we had that year long hiatus and he came back to, to be our first guest coming back after COVID. And now he's back again to talk about his new research. Well, not new research, but his uh, recent research um, on the, uh, the science and the development of the atomic bomb as it relates to the mother wheel. So family, without any further ado, please welcome back to the platform, student minister, Dr. Wesley Muhammad. Asalaamu Alaikum, sir. Wa Alaikum Salaam, sirs and ma'am. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Well, Dr. Wesley, you know, a lot of people know who you are. Um, some people may not. For those who do not know who you are, can you tell us who you are, what your background is in, and what inspired you to come back to the STEM files? Yeah, first, um, I, I must say from blog talk to the current iteration of STEM files, it's a awesome upgrade. 
Yes, sir. Praise be to God. Upgrade. That opening was fire. Yes, sir. Thank you. Last, the last <laughs> time I was on, it didn't have that opening. That opening is dope. Yes, sir. Thank you. We appreciate that. I, I'm very honored to be on this platform anytime because what you all are doing, um, holding up the light of the sciences in the context of Islam, because Islam is, we teach, the science of everything in life. So it's really good to see Muslims with pushing science in the forefront in the real time and the youth of all of you it's a very very good and important look so this this platform is very important this is very important to the branding of the nation of islam and everyone who knows me knows i'm very sensitive <laughs> yes sir Some would say anal about the branding of our nation and in my opinion this platform and yours representation is very good for the branding and very important for the branding islam is the science of everything in life and your platform your conversations, your demonstration, illustrate that point beautifully. Praise I will you. not, I'm gonna have to disappoint because another thing folks who invite me to their platforms know about me by now is I hate self-introduction. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. If, if whatever, the audience knows or doesn't know about me it's fine i'm just your brother the most important thing about me to me is i'm striving to be a helper of the most honor of the honorable brother minister farrakhan the chief helper of the most honorable elijah muhammad that is what I take humble pride in. That is what I am most thankful to Allah to be doing is to sit at the foot of the Messiah and striving to be a helper of his with whom Allah is pleased. And I would know that by whether the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan himself is pleased with my service. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. I, I, Thank you so family, much. Family, I think bro. I think he done told us to get right to it. I think that's that was cold <laughs> for let, let's get it popping. Right, um, right. What you think, Sister Dr. Joy? If you, you think that's what you heard too? Go, ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Well, let's get into it, bro. Um I, I have like I said, I'm itching to show that video um to lay a plat um, a foundation for what we're going to talk about. So if we would, can we get into that? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Matter of fact, just to kind of lay a, uh, um, a precursor for, for tonight, family, this show, this episode is going to be real uh, science-y in, in a sense. You know, we're going to get real deep into the development, the engineering side of things, as well as, you know, and, do, and trust me, Dr. Wesley has already done this in his previous presentations. But what we're going to do is focus on a lot of the scientific aspects that he talked about in his work. So we're going to be playing some clips. We're going to be showing some images. And in these images and clips, we're going to be kind of dissecting the different types of uh, scientific comparisons as well as fallacies that may be um, uh, present in, in a lot of the, the work that, that you see in, in, in the world today as it relates to the truth about these atomic bombs. So family, um, let's get right into it, Jabril. Yes, sir. All right. About to share the screen now, family. No, oh, you already got Can everything. Be okay. seen. Yes, sir. All right. Here we go. This is my habit, my way. I don't like family to advance any novel claim or idea 
without backing it up with a document. Is the matter here is credibility. There are many people out there, many teachers that the people cling to. And I have to be honest, I don't, most don't have a lot of credibility with me. There is the trend to sound as exotic as we can, make as exotic a claim as we can to tickle the ears of the people. And more often than not, the claim we are making is spun from whole cloth or it is a fudging of facts and so credibility is at a significant low in my opinion family with so many or in the landscape of our intelligentsia today so I don't ever like to advance a claim without accompanying it with a document that you can vet the sources, the credibility of our claim. So, praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Now, I'm go one thing I must say, Doc. I watched this interview. That is my favorite part of the interview. <laughs> you said so much. You said so much. Um, but that sequence to me is my favorite part. So as we open up what we're going to talk about, can you speak to the importance of having a very tangible foundation to stand on when you speak and when you give exegesis or when you speak to a topic that you're trying to impart knowledge, wisdom and understanding to the people, particularly when, as it relates to science, technology? engineering and mathematics. We really appreciate you on that, beloved. Yes, sir. Thank you for that. Credibility is very important. You, brothers and sisters, as scientists, scientists and lecturers, public lecturers, more often than not, those circles don't overlap. Most scientists do our work in writing, right? In publication, right? It's publish or perish. And writing requires a discipline, a dotting of the I's and crossing of the T's because the writing that we are used to is peer reviewed. Right. And so our credibility with everything we advance, the process of what we do has strictures that um, except we be true to the process, our credibility will be immediately public publicly exposed as lacking with public lecturing, especially as it's done in the black community. Hmm. Lecturing is different, right? We, because we are, we tend to speak for effect of the crowd. We want to move the crowd. And so it's easy to abandon strictness of thought, right? To because we want to trigger a reaction that we want to trigger feedback that makes us feel good. So me being native to the classroom, that's my natural habitat. Right? Mm -hmm. Me 
being first in academia. Entering the arena of public speaking and ministry, it's it's not the easiest <laughs> transition or navigation or negotiation for me because the needs and the rules are different. Now I say this, I laid this as a foundation to answer your question because in terms of that clip that you played from me, too many lecturers mount the rostrum in these public halls. And they want to get a reaction from the people. So, and because there's so many lecturers, there's so much thought populating the landscape. So you really have to go the extra mile to get any attention. And people are willing to go the extra mile to get the attention, to set themselves off. So they spend more exact, exotic, more exotic, more exotic claims. And it's not the habit in this arena, the public speaking arena, it's not the habit of someone from the audience stepping up and saying, yeah, that sounds good, but where you get that from? <laughs> right, right. As, 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 as writers, we apply a footnote apparatus come on come on because the field is asking that question where'd you get that from that's why it requires the footnote or in note apparatus but in public speaking you that's not a requirement but we get away with advancing all of this stuff and so and the audience reacts to what sounds the most exotic. Hmm. I personally can't stand it. I can't stand it. And so I, I always, Brother Jabril, get hit with, I get hit with the, when I'm public speaking, where you get that from? Mm -hmm. I never heard that before. And that's good, but more often than not, when the person says, I never heard that before, they are questioning the credibility of what I said, which is appropriate. That's where I come from, but that's why I insist on producing a document. So I answer that question before you ask it. Where I get it from, well, this is where I get it from. All of the sources are there. So credibility, because it is the trend now. Mm -hmm. To say whatever will separate us from the cacophony of voices. Right. Separate us from that to get a reaction from the social media crowd. Get the likes, get the numbers, monetize uh, come on, come on. And so it requires continuously taking up, raising the ante. <laughs> right, right. I never want to be <clears throat> mistaken for being a part of that crowd. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful, Thank beautiful way to Allah. kick us off. The science of credibility we're talking about. So I just wanted to open this up there because as we get into the meat and potatoes, if you will, what we're going to talk about. Everything has been vetted. Everything has been researched. You know, we in the Nation of Islam are taught to do our best to take Allah's coloring. And what that means is we take the man in our midst coloring. And if we don't know what to say, we say what he said. Now, that may not be sexy, but that doesn't get us into trouble. And that keeps us consistent. So that's what we're going to be on here. All praises due to Allah is consistent. So I'm going to turn it over to my fellow co-hosts because I get to run in my mouth. Y'all here for me the whole time. So Sister Dr. Joy, Brother Tariq Cardiac, let's get into it. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Dr. Dr. Wesley. I just wanted to um, note the, the part that you said about footnote apparatus. Our footnote uh, in the Nation of Islam is obviously the Holy Quran and the teachings from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad himself. So that, that kind of credibility is undisputed. 
right? Cool. That that is what is really and going. That, to that, that's thus saith the Lord. Absolutely. Right? That, that, but that there's a difference between, and it's very important. I don't mean to interrupt, Dr. Joy. Please forgive me. Um, but you raise a very critical point to what I said earlier. Revelation and scholarship are are at very different places on the hierarchy of knowledge. Talk about it. They are not the same. Mm -hmm. Revelation, thus saith the Lord, is at the very top. And scholarship, the best of it, on its best day, is far below revelation in the hierarchy of knowledge. This is because mm -hmm. revelation, thus saith the Lord, never has a margin of human error that accompanies it but all scholarship the best scholarship on the best day has inherently a margin of human error in it so right. this is why scholarship has to be put before the com community appears Come on. embedded by others to minimize the consequences of the error of that first human. Thus saith the Lord comes with no margin of human error. I'll praise be to Allah. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that. Thank you. Since Dr. George, did you have a follow-up to that or was there something that you just kind of it was something that I was thinking about? That's all. Okay, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool, cool. Well, family, you know, um, Let's get into the meat and potatoes of tonight's uh, episode, right? So we're talking about atomic bombs and the more powerful, right? So what do I mean by the more powerful? The more powerful meaning that no matter what they produce in their laboratories, at the universities, at their at their manufacturing facilities, none of it can come close to the type of manufacturing engineering power behind the things that Allah himself has produced. And one of those things that has not been able to be and not has not been able to be duplicated engineering wise is of course the mother wheel right so when we say the mother wheel we're talking about the 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 tool that's going to be used to bring justice on this planet for all the wrongdoing to sit down all the tyrants right so when we're talking about the more powerful and and you know the atomic bombs and the mother wheel. Dr. Wesley, what, what was your inspiration behind even producing this type of uh, work to to not, not not necessarily compare them, but to connect the two um, aspects of engineering? Yes, sir. Well, let's start with what Ben Rich said. Ben Rich was the second president of Lockheed. We hear Lockheed Skunk Works, the like Lockheed Martin. Mm -hmm. And we've heard much of Lockheed recently during the congressional hearings on UAPs or unidentified area phenomena, now unidentified anomalous phenomena. But Lockheed's name was dropped several times. The second president of Lockheed, Ben Rich, before he died in 1996, he said this. He said, there are two types of UFOs. The ones they make, meaning the ones they've been studying, mm -hmm. and the ones we make. It's very important. He said, <laughs> Two types of UFOs, the ones wow. they make Come on. and the ones we make now. The ones that Ben Rich's we, the ones his circle make and have been making since the 40s is based on a lot giving them his calling card. Call. The technology that Ben Rich 
was so proud of. He said, Ben Rich, we can take E.T. home now. <laughs> of course, that's a nod to the movie, Steven right. Spielberg movie, E.T. The alien got left here and wanted to go home. Ben Rich yeah. said, with the knowledge that we have now, with the UFOs that we now make, we can take E.T. home. This is, he is citing and beating his chest based on the success in his mind of the duplication program. America, Canada, Russia, Germany, Italy have been engaged in a duplication program for decades now. The attempt to duplicate the technology of the mother craft, they don't have access to the mother wheel. They've had access to a baby plane since 1933. Now, it was always thought that the only, that our lives first calling card given to the enemy was in 1947, Roswell. Mm -hmm. For a long time, that was the only credible case that we knew of. And so we thought 1947, Roswell, New Mexico, was the first time Allah gave or sent his calling card down to the enemy. Now, since 2020, we now know that the first calling card that Allah sent to the enemy was in 1933 in Italy. This is a fact, a fact that came out in the second congressional hearing from the Pentagon whistleblower, David Groose. Now, all of this in reference to your question. Since 1933, Satan has been studying Supreme technology. Now, when Allah gifted Satan with a specimen to study in 1933, Allah knew what he was doing. Right, right. He, uh, he was peeling back the veil of secrets for Satan. And this built up Satan's hubris. That's what we heard in Ben Rich. There's the UFOs that they make, and there's the UFOs that we make. But the only reason, Mr. Rich, you can make your UFOs is because Allah lifted the veil for you mm. deliberately. Come on. Allowed you to study some of the secrets. You were able to advance your science and technology, but never to the degree of supreme science and technology, but Allah wants to fight you. Allah came to destroy these people. Their hubris would not allow them to submit. Allah offers them the opportunity to humble themselves, but because they have been led to an elevated level of science and technology, they are very prideful and arrogant. They think, Brother Tariq, that they can fight God. They think that their UFOs are a match for God's so-called UFO. And when the, <laughs> this is why there will be a battle in the sky. That's right. Come on, come on. Satan will not humble himself. Satan was inspired by his access to this supreme technology. He thinks now he's a peer of God. Thus, the battle in the sky will happen. You give him an inch, they take a mile, huh? That is correct. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. All right, family. So we at the 30-minute mark of the, of the program. Um, this time is usually dedicated to our commercial break for the Final Call newspaper. So, family, check it out. Thank you. 
Now you can get the same uncompromising truth you've come to expect from the Final Call newspaper on all your connected devices. Subscribe to the Final Call Digital Edition today. Go to subscribe.finalcalldigital.com. This is Naya Mohammed, a future architect, and you're watching The STEM Files. All right, family. So let's get back. In oh, hold on. All right. All right. So let's get back into it. Um, Sister Dr. Joy, what you got? Yes, sir. Well, I, I just had a quick question too. Um, you know, they recently came out with this movie. Oppenheimer movie. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering how is this relevant to us, the, the nation of Islam, and um, you know the, the mother wheel in context of America's nuclear program? Yes, very, very great question, an important question, Dr. Joy. I, one, the movie, I enjoy the movie for its entertainment value, but also, it is a history that is part of the broader history of the nation of Islam. Right. The Manhattan yeah. Project, the Oppenheimer, was the scientific director of the Manhattan Project that produced the world's first atomic bomb. President. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, whose administration initiated the Manhattan Project in a 1945 White House memo. President Roosevelt acknowledges that the Manhattan Project the project, the American effort to produce an atomic bomb, that project was anchored in the quote, atomic secrets that the US was able to extract from the study of these celestial, non-terrestrial celestial devices. Mm. The Manhattan Project, the atomic bomb project, came out of their access to and study of the baby plane that was landed, given to Italy in 1933, retrieved by Benito Mussolini's government, who had a partnership with Adolf Hitler's Germany. And this gave Adolf Hitler and the Nazis access to this baby wheel. The US Navy had operatives among the Germans, had spies, Office of Naval Intelligence, had spies over in Germany and Germany's black projects, all of which revolved around the study of this 1933 landed craft. The American naval spies were able to extract some data that was sent back here to America. And so by 1942 the, and 1940s, 344, the time period of these leaked memos from President Roosevelt, who credits the atomic secrets of these craft for spawning the Manhattan Project, their ability to make, in his words, a super weapon of war. That super weapon of war is the atomic bomb that came out of the atomic secrets of the baby play. Mm. So the story that's told on the screen 
in the Oppenheimer movie. It's a story, the backdrop to that story is our story. The Nation of Islam story is the backdrop to the story of Oppenheimer, right. specifically. Oppenheimer as so-called father of the atomic bomb. Oh, wow. Thank you for bringing that full circle. That's amazing. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And you know, you said something very key. You said that, you know, it's, it's pretty much a law allowing them access to what's called trade secrets, right? And trade secrets, for anybody who's an inventor or, in, or innovator of any kind, trade secrets, or you don't even have to be an inventor. You can just come up with something right trade secrets are you know bits of information that you are allowing somebody to or that you have that you may allow somebody to you know read over or or absorb yeah. in some kind of way and yeah. they would eventually you know be may you may license that out to them or, or what have you so can you talk to can you speak on the the purpose of you, you said because he wanted he wants to battle them right the battle in the sky right but can you talk about the purpose of Oppenheimer even agreeing to do something like that? What what was his inspiration to 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 even go in that in that path with his scientific background? Yeah, so there's a number of pieces to that. I, I guess a couple of things. First, we should note that Oppenheimer was a Jew, but a non they say a non practicing Jew, right? He was a non-practicing Jew that was very fascinated with Hinduism. Mm. The other part of that is his relationship with another Jew, a great scientific mind, Albert Einstein, which of course he's featured in the movie, Albert Einstein, history or legend, one or the other, says Oppenheimer penned a letter to President Roosevelt. Let's back up, let's back up. Mm. The inspiration <laughs> to the non-practicing Jew Oppenheimer, who is yet fascinated with Hinduism, where we will unpack the relevance of that in a minute, but the real significance or backdrop to this non-practicing Jew Oppenheimer availing himself to be the scientific director for the project that produces the atomic bomb. Well, the most immediate reason is in 1938, the Nazis split the atom. The Nazis were the first to crack the atom in 1938. Now, of course, so fire, the fire of the gods were lowered from heaven in 1938, and it was lowered to the Nazi, the German Nazis. But of course, the 1938 success, German success in cracking the atom was based on their study of the baby plane that they had access to since 1933. They were, Germany was the first to extract atomic secrets from the baby plane. And this is why they were the first to split the atom in 1938, a uranium atom. This was a lightning bolt to the, the rest of the world. Hours after the news of the German splitting of the atom, hours after it was announced here in America, American scientists were able to duplicate it. Now, Oppenheimer said, he says in the movie, and I assume it's history, both him and Albert Einstein, their fear was the Nazis having the fire of the God. And of course, them as Jews feared what that portended for them because the Nazis were 
anti-Jew. So they did not want the Nazis to be the first to translate their success of splitting of the atom into a weapon. So Albert Einstein, we learned, wrote the president urging him to beat the Nazis. And Oppenheimer, we are told, that's why he was willing to sign on to the project because he knew what he read the handwriting on the wall. Let Adolf Hitler and the Nazis be the first one to weaponize this fire from the gods. Then it's all over for them. So, so this is the history that's presented in terms of why Oppenheimer as a Jew was willing to oversee this project. But as a footnote, I'm going to say this. Oppenheimer, when Oppenheimer, behind his black goggles, witnessed Trinity explode. Trinity is the name, the code name he gave to the atomic bomb that was tested July 1945. He gave it the code name Trinity. Not because he had the Christian Trinity in mind, because he had the Hindu Trinity in mind, because he was fascinated with Hinduism. The Hindu Trinity of Rama the Creator, Vishnu the Preserver, and Shiva the Destroyer. And when he witnessed the plume, the nuclear plume of Trinity, he said that the words of the Hindu Bhagavad Gita <laughs> came to his mind. The words of the Hindu God, Vishnu Shiva, who said, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. The Hindu God, Vishnu Shiva, who said that, he had made himself as if he were the brilliance and the power of a thousand suns, S-U-N. That's how he saw Trinity. That's what he saw himself releasing with that atomic bomb, releasing the power of a thousand suns. So mm -hmm. I believe, I believe, it was not just the threat of the Nazis being the first to weaponize this fire from the gods. Oppenheimer, the Hindu Oppenheimer, he was fascinated by the prospect of seeing death, the destroyer of wor worlds in the form of 10 suns. And so he produced it in the desert of Los Alamos. Mm. Yes, sir. Oh, thank, thank you for that. Because it, it's always good whenever anyone does anything of, of a scientific nature. It's always good to have a a motive and a reason behind what they do. Because a lot of times, when you when you see a product, you know whether it's an atomic bomb, a mother wheel, or a vaccine, <laughs> whatever you want, whatever you can think of, the function of that product is tied to the vision of the person that made it. Uh, absolutely. 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 Yes, sir. Okay, cool, cool. So now let's 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 move on. We got some uh, more questions. And for those who are watching, if you would like to ask Dr. Wesley a question, please drop your comments um, in the comment section. All right, so let's acknowledge some of the people that we have watching. We have Brother 147 Savage. I'm assuming that's the brother. I don't want to, matter of fact, I don't know who, I don't know the general person, but we have somebody from Flint, Michigan. We have, um, Muamin and Sean, so Walaikum Salam. We have Laverne McFalls. We have my mother, Sister Kabila Mohammed, Walaikum Salam. Brother Trevor, okay, I see you, bro. All right, from uh, St. Louis, Missouri, we have Clear Vision Media Network, Walaikum Salam. Lita uh, Schneidmill, appreciate uh, We're going we're gonna to get into that. We're going to get into that. And then we have uh, Amanda Collier. 
Christy too. Um, right, right. Oh, you know her? That's my sister. <laughs> oh, okay. Praise be to a lot. That's the one that had the birthday? It's the birthday today? No, sir, not today. Okay, not today. Okay, got you, got you. All right, Manny, uh, AX, Cardoso, Malik Salam, Shantae Boutique. All right. And then, of course, right here out of Richmond, Virginia, Brother Thomas, uh, Brother Thomas, uh, Malik Salam, bro. Thank you for tuning in. All right, so let's get down to it. Sister Joy, Sister Dr. Joy, what you got? Yes, sir. Well, um, Dr. Wesley, if you could just walk us through a little bit about the beginning of the, the building of the, the plane in 1909 and the construction and how it was completed in 1929, how they were built, where they were built, the island of Nippon, it's now called Japan, and, and also how that relates to um, its, its functionality. Great, great. Thank you. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the blueprints for the mother wheel was for thousands of years kept in the holy city Mecca. And then in 1909, those blueprints was handed over to Japan. And that's when construction of the craft, the mother wheel, began. Now, I understand the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that craft like this have flown around our skies for eons. The original mm -hmm. man, the original God, used similar craft to put the mountains on the earth. Mm -hmm. So we were always flying around our sky. Right. The, the significant difference of the mother plane, of the wheel, its architect, Master Far Muhammad, he had a greater wisdom, has a greater wisdom, Right. than any God that ever preceded him. Oh, I'm sorry, preceded him. Any God before him, Master Far Muhammad has a more supreme wisdom. In a, applying his more supreme wisdom to an architectural design that preceded him and others worked with, but did not have his level of wisdom. So there were circular ships flying around our skies, but none of them can do what the mother wheel can do today. Mm -hmm. What distinguishes the mother wheel as the sign of the mightiest God that ever lived, it's not the shape of this craft which sets it apart. It is the level of technology of right, this craft right. that makes it unlike anything that has ever graced our planet or our skies. And that's because the architect of this craft is greater, is higher in wisdom and scientific knowledge than any of the previous architects. So in 1909, construction, blueprints from the Holy City Mecca were transferred to Nippon, Japan. Construction began. We know from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that the most brilliant minds from all over the world were a part of this process. We should see it, I suspect, I suspect. If you've seen the movie Oppenheimer, there's a parallel here I'm suggesting. If you've seen the movie Oppenheimer, you notice that while he's called the father of the atomic bomb, nowhere do we see him as hands-on the construction of the bomb. Mm. This is because he was the scientific director. Right. And at the Secret City Los Alamos, there were hundreds of people 
whose hands were on it, but not his hands. It was his mind that directed the project. I suspect that the same applies to Master Fart Muhammad. I don't see him putting hands on any part of the construction of the craft. I suspect that he was the scientific director of that clandestine project that produced the mothership. It's his mind that was put on this project. So brilliant minds from all over were brought in to help with the construction, take part in the construction of the project. And the mother wheel took flight in 1929, 20 years later. Mm -hmm. And it's not a spooky process. This clandestine project had to be funded. And like black op projects that the U.S. government engages in, those off-the-books projects, they need to be funded. So they have a black budget set aside, monies that don't go through Congress and Congress doesn't know anything about in order to fund these secret black projects where the construction of the mothership was the supreme black project. There was likely a black budget that was drawn from brother Jabril Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with him, said that $150 million was used to construct the mother wheel. And there's some connection between either the funding or the flying of the mothership in 1929 with the crashing of the stock market in right, 1929. Right. So that's the basis of the, the Supreme Black Project, the construction of the mother playing the wheel of all wheels. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Got you, got you. So, you, so you, you bring in, a, you bring in, you know, we're getting right into the to the the focal point of tonight's uh, episode. We're talking about the technology, right? So, what was it? What were some of the things that that they were trying to duplicate from what they saw with the little bit of with the taste that Allah gave them? Just with, a taste. Uh, right, right, just a taste. What were some of the things they were trying to duplicate technologically? What are some of the things that they saw in this? In this sample of what Allah gave them in this in in the the baby plane, what were some of the things technologically that they were trying to duplicate? So, the duplication program was very layered, and I don't claim to know all of the layers. There's two aspects that is pretty well documented. They attempted to duplicate the ship itself. And so the wingless craft, many people who study UFOs, they want to, they note that before Kenneth Arnold made his infamous observations of so-called flying saucers in 1947, that before thrusting flying saucers and UFOs into the public consciousness, this was June 1947. And then Roswell in July 1947. Some scholars have pointed out before this public discussion of flying saucers, Germany was test flying circular craft in 1945. So they make the mistake to want to believe that the phenomenon is a Nazi phenomenon. That the fathers of the UFO is the Germans because we have designs in the record of the test flying of 
circular craft by the Nazis in 1945. What they don't understand is that the Nazi circular craft was part of the duplication program. They were mm -hmm. duplicating the aerodynamics, or they were trying to duplicate, but unsuccessfully. Trying to duplicate the aerodynamics of this new craft, this wingless craft. And so they experimented with circular wingless disc craft. craft. Now, what's important is that the lack of success of the Germans at this early period is what resulted in these crash, these early crash saucers. The 1933 calling card wasn't a crash disc. A lot just landed that baby for them to plane discover. in northern mm -hmm. Italy for them to discover. Right, right, right. The earliest crashed disc were Germans dupl trying to duplicate the aerodynamics of the baby plane. They took flight and then they came crashing down in many areas. And so because of that, some want to say that Roswell was a German disc craft. No, Roswell's disc wasn't a German project. It was a divine project. And when we talk about the baby planes, we never use the language crash without qualifying it with the language deliberate. A deliberate explosion over Roswell, New Mexico. None of this is why people like Dr. Stephen Greer, we take issue with him. He wants us to believe that all of these UFOs are crashing all over the place because of America's scalar radar system that's interfering with the operations systems of these crash, bringing them down. No, sir, not at all. America's radar system is not interfering with the baby planes operations. And when Allah violently gifted America with a disc or parts of a disc in 1947, that was very deliberate. As the Honorable Brother Mr. Farrakhan said, these pilots know how to explode their craft. Because remember, from Roswell, Allah allowed them the material of the craft. And what? Because it was scattered in the debris field. And they have been studying this debris in all of they, they are marveling at the fact that nothing they can do can damage in any way this material. Right, right. They can't scorch it. They can't break it. They can do nothing to damage or destroy the material. The Roswell explosion was a lie showing them that he can destroy this material. Y'all can't. Y'all can't do it. <laughs> right. do it. But I can because right. I'm the architect of this. I'm the engineer, the architect and the engineer of this. So that's the difference between the 1933 landing in, the ninth, in Italy and the 1947 explosion in Roswell, New Mexico. They sent two distinct messages to the West, but they have been duplicating. So to answer your question, the two layers that I'm aware of, they're so well documented, is in terms of the duplication program, they have been attempting to duplicate the craft itself in its flight capabilities, and they have been trying to duplicate or weaponize 
secrets that they've extracted from their study, the first desire was, in the words of President Roosevelt, use the atomic secrets from these celestial devices to produce a, quote, super weapon of war. Hmm. So craft over here and weaponry over here. Both come out of the duplication program. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we are we are our in uh, family. This this has been a very uh, eye opening episode to me personally. I'm not sure for the for the viewing audience. Um, we're gonna take this time to kind of do a black business highlight. Uh, the black business highlight for today is Spitfire Co. Uh, this is a black owned, of course, uh, apparel company based out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, by brother Anaz X. Uh, he has put together a phenomenal um, array of apparel that really helped inspire, that, that are really inspired by the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, as well as inspired by the, 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 the youthful mind that is, you know, the person that developed the apparel. And in this incredible family, he has shirts, he has hoodies in the same design. Family, if you're interested in, in getting to know more about uh, this apparel company and if you would like to purchase some of their products visit the link in the description where it says black business highlight or if you're watching on facebook definitely check it out in the caption section all right let's get back to it family um so tonight's episode we you know we're talking about atomic bombs uh and the more powerful now i had a question now this may be a reach to some you know but it's definitely worth asking and dr wesley you can please correct me if i'm wrong um didn't it does doesn't it say somewhere in the supreme wisdom or, or some some literature i can't exactly remember that master father muhammad attended usc us UC, usc berkeley so or am i or am i misreading that no so i don't know about berkeley but there's some ambiguity whether it was ucla or usc mm -hmm. and I, let me let me give a let me I, give a background. Oh, I'm sorry, bro. I, I just want to kind of give a um, the background to the question. So, one of the reasons I'm asking this is because when you look at research and development, right, especially in the academic setting, there's always a level of research that you can pull from, like you said, the journals and and, the, and different types of published work. There's always something that you can pull from, right? So, do you think it's a possibility that Master Fraud Muhammad may have, if if he did indeed attend UC USC Berkeley? which is the, the university that uh, he developed this program at, do you think that there might may have been a connection between his attend, him attending near years before this project started? Right, well, but, well first understand, UCLA, mm -hmm. UC Berkeley, USC, they're all part of the same University of California system. Right. They're the branches in those respective cities now i have not but you if if you have a source placing the savior at uc berkeley i'm happy to receive it and, and look at it i am familiar with uh, the honorable elijah muhammad stating or implying either and it's not clear to me because the two statements seem they were ambiguous but either ucla or usc but i reckon because there's ambiguity it could be uc berkeley but regardless they're the same system so say say because the savior was teaching for 20 years and he was in California and he was absolutely, he absolutely taught in the University of California system. So I suspect that, no, it's very possible your, your thought has credibility and it cannot be dismissed that undergirding Oppenheimer's work at berkeley 
may possibly be something that the savior shared while he was in the university of california system right, right. It, so for me your thought isn't dependent on us getting a record that the savior was at uc berkeley rather than ucla or usc he may have been at berkeley I guess, or he may not. But because they're all part of the same system, if the Savior put a particular groundbreaking formula on the green board at UCLA, say just hypothetically, purely hypothetically, say in 1925 just purely hypothetical he's in front of a ucla class and he puts a groundbreaking formula on the board in a lecture hall at ucla uc berkeley would not be immune to or right. not, or, or, or quarantine from knowledge of it right right so i think your suggestion is um very plausible very plausible absolutely yes sir and and we're all scientists on here so you know family i didn't i didn't pull from that to quote anything i pulled from that to like i said like like dr winston said to raise the suggestion yeah or the idea yeah it's very, exactly. it's, it's very worth considering right absolutely dr joy Praise be to Allah. Well, um, Dr. Wesley, while you were speaking of the construction, I was considering, um, you know, that the mother wheel is obviously multifaceted. It's one of creation and destruction. So can you talk a little bit about how it's able to house a city in the sky as well as create disastrous effects right. for the enemy? Your wording is very good. House a city in the sky. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the mother wheel is a little human made planet. Mm -hmm. And like all planets can create their own atmosphere. The mother plane can create its own atmosphere. Mm. And this is how a city. That's huge. Yes, sir. Can live and if there's a, a city doesn't just imply structures right it implies inhabitants right human life so the residents of this city on this wheel the reason they can be on earth or they can be 40 miles above the earth outside of earth's atmosphere or they can be in the depths of the ocean, amazing, but still wow. exist with no knowledge of the changing of environments because they have their own earthly atmosphere. Wherever the mothership goes, its crew stays in an earthly atmosphere because they are earthborn beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they can travel anywhere the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, anywhere in the universe, because they take the Earth atmosphere with them, because the mothership is able to create this atmosphere. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that every six months to a year, the mother plane comes back into Earth's atmosphere to replenish the oxygen necessary for the environment the atmosphere so yes the city in the sky the city the citadel of this little human made planet called the mother will yes ma'am and we know as we heard as we were reminded today from student minister 
Ishmael Muhammad during his wonderful remarks today. When the Honorable Minister Farrakhan was blessed to be taken to the mother wheel, mm -hmm. being transported on the baby wheel, at one point he was given an aerial view. Right. He could see the city in the sky. And one last point, Close Encounters of the Third Kind by Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Steven Spielberg considers himself a ufologist. This is why he made his first blockbuster, 1977, Close Encounter of the Third Kind. Steven Spielberg was guided by Alan Hynek. Alan Hynek was is a was a ufologist, but he worked for the government, and he had a key job in disinformation. But what I want the point I want to make to your question: If you watch Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which you should, mm -hmm. you have great truth mixed with false. So you have revelation. And you have the deception of the re revelation, the craft that's at the center of the climactic moment, the spacecraft in that movie, the star of that movie, it is a mothership. And when you see, this isn't clear in the movie itself, in the final version, but when you see the model. Because there's been many books written on the movie. Spielberg wrote on the movie. When you look at the model behind the ship that we see in the movie, the model is of a mothership with New York City on top of it. Mm -hmm. The mothership that's featured in that movie is a ship with a city in the sky. This is 1977. This is because they heard that from, they knew that from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And that truth was incorporated in that 1977 movie. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And family, for those who are watching, we are definitely going to have Dr. Wesley come back and do a part two because there's so much to unpack here. Matter of fact, we can literally take bits and pieces of his already existing video, uh, content on YouTube and make individual episodes from that, you know, so we're definitely going to have him back on. Um, but yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we actually at the hour 13 mark, we don't, we usually like to keep STEM files episodes kind of, you know, yes, sir. short and sweet in a sense. Yes, um, but I wanted to ask you now, this is kind of an off related uh, uh, question, but it's, it's, it's definitely related. So, one of the materials used to uh, to stabilize the active component in the in the nuclear bomb is tungsten, right? And tungsten is 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 a is a metal that's really that's that's like I said before, is used to uh, stabilize material. It's used to help um, keep it from keep something from damaging in in a sense when it's being uh, initiated with some type of firepower, right? So I wanted to get from you. You know, we had a few brothers in the Nation of Islam back in 1967 get a patent for a material for um, uh, a product they were using, a product they were using that was made of tungsten, right? So, can you speak to the ability for the black man to take Earth's natural resources and use something positive for it as it relates to our open enemy who uses and abuses our natural resources to make weapons that would eventually kill others? Well, first, let me say, with this piece you just dropped on tungsten, you've exceeded where I can go with my knowledge. Oh, yes, That's sir. why I'm sitting among scientists. I don't know about that. I'm eager to hear from you, and I'm looking at the display you have, and I'm very intrigued. This is very powerful, and I would like to hear from you a more yes, in-depth discussion of tungsten and, and the thought that 
So are you saying that in Trinity, that in the initial atomic bomb, this material was used, Tuxton? Yes, sir. I don't know that. Yes, sir. And, so, and we have, so please go ahead. Yes, sir. So that material, in, when you're looking at the, the anatomy of an atomic bomb, right? You have to, there's, there needs to be something there that allows the bomb to go, the, the active um, material that is used to create the explosion. There has to be something there that, is, that allows it to go from one, pe one part of the bomb to another. And they use tungsten to kind of stabilize that, that uh, motion of the active uh, compound. So mm -hmm. what I'm asking you is, you know, I know it has nothing to do with what we're talking about, you know, right now in terms of the atomic bomb, but these brothers came together in the 60s and used the same material to create something that would be used in multiple industrial purposes, right? Wow, so I did not know. Just cut, Yes, sir, so just coming from the standpoint of black people and how we do things, we're always looking to use Earth's natural resources to make life better mm -hmm. for somebody else, right? We're not, we're not interested in abusing nature or abusing Earth's minerals. So talk, just kind of give us a, mm -hmm. uh, a closing remark in a sense yeah. to That's why it's so important. Yes, sir. That's the difference between God and devil. Right. So we all enjoy these smartphones. It's great technology. I heard the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan describe this smartphone as both God and devil. Mm -hmm. See, the difference between God and devil, Satan will create a technology that will be great, but not without great negativity. Mm. So this great device is a source of great harm, it's a source of great utility, great advancement, a sign of great advancement, but the damage through radiation, the damage this device is doing to the environment and to us users. Satan, his science always comes with good and bad. Versus Allah's science. So the baby planes and the mother wig, it uses a proportion. They've been trying to figure out the proportion system. How are these craft moving? The way they don't see any trails. They, it's not gasoline. It's not. And it's not emitting, and while nuclear power, atomic power is suggested, it's not giving off, it's not bleeding radiation that right. damages the environment. Right, so right. great, the white man has succeeded in producing great technology, but his great technology always comes with harmful effects, whereas God and God's people, God has supreme technology because not only is it great turf, but it's without the damaging effects. So to see and learn from you, Brother Tariq, what I did not know, an element that was part of Satan's super weapon of war, he, you, he weaponized it for war purposes, but the original man, God's people, brothers and sisters in the nation of Islam, were able to use that same material for purposes of life. Yeah, that illustrates the difference between God and devil. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. The difference between God. And, and you know what? I, I want to... First and foremost, before we go, I want to thank you for joining us on the STEM Files. You know, thank this you has been um, absolutely, absolutely. You know, this is always your your third, fourth home. You know, where, where, wherever we are in that that line of succession, right? But I want to, you know, just give put a thought in the minds of the audience, right? Science and technology, as our brother said, is 
literally, it literally puts you in the valley of decision. You know, when you have something that's remarkable, like a tungsten or or the navy beam, right? Or anything that provides a, a heavy amount of value to an industry, you're always being met with, should I do some, should I do this or should I do that? Right? So that's what our brother's talking about when it comes to, you know, Satan having that choice, because he does. But he always chooses to go with his nature. That's so right. we should always choose to go with our nature, and that's righteousness. Absolutely. Well put. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, family, um, well, let's do this. Dr. Joy, did you have any closing remarks before we go? Yes, sir. Thank you to the STEM files. Uh, first and foremost, all thanks to uh, Almighty God, Allah, came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Thank you, uh, student minister, Dr. Wesley Muhammad. Thank you, Dr. Joy. <laughs> yes, sir. My brother Tariq um, and uh, brother Jabril, <laughs> and um, I just wanted to also close with this. This is this has just been a wonderful program, a wonderful evening. You know, we've been speaking on science and technology, but also the art of Almighty God Allah um, and His creations. Beautiful. And um, you right. know, to to quote the the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the unity of the black man would give us a weapon more powerful than any hydrogen or atomic bomb. So Come on. just Come on. Mark, I mean, like, look at look at this. This is a beautiful wow. plant. Thank you um, for the stem files. Awesome, awesome. And we want to acknowledge some of our comments. We have uh, KA, favorite movies, the Unchild. Thank, thank the lost teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I understood between the truth and falsehood of that entertainment. Thank you, Brother Wesley. You're jamming. Uh, Brother Ian, God does. That's right. Bill of Muhammad. Don't <laughs> sleep on that Navy bean. <laughs> uh, Demi Sanya, all praises due to Allah. Uh, Amanda call you once again. All praises due to Allah. Thank you, Brother Wesley. Um, Brother Trey out of, of Richmond, Virginia, right here in Moss number 24. It's in the house, in the building. All right, family. Well, this has been another edition of the STEM Files. We have some questions. We have one question from the audience, but I want to get to that in part two because that, that actually has a lot to do with the, the next phase of this series that I want to get into of your, of your briefs, beloved. Um, but Family, this has been another edition of the STEM Files where we serve as the voice of STEM talent and Black culture on behalf of myself and Jabril, uh, who had to uh, hop off due to um, a prior engagement. He definitely um, wishes wishes us well, and he appreciates the, the time that Dr. Wesley spent in um, making sure that he's able to kind of break down some of the things that, that, we, that he spoke about in his previous content. But family, once again, Tariq Cardiac, Brilliant engineer, Dr. Joy 2X, and of course, our esteemed guest, student minister, Dr. Wesley Muhammad. Until next time, family. Peace. You believe in these false prophets? I say I'm Betty Lyon. Betty Lyon. No football, New York City Giants. Girl, dad, rest in peace to Kobe Bryant. When we teaching our babies, we teach them heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. When we teaching our women, we teach them heavy science. 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 When we teach men, we teach them heavy